for having me. I'm it is excited. my pleasure. Yes, let me tell the world who you are. So let me get your bio here. So Miss Tamika Sherry Bond, affectionately known as Sherry, is a well-known, is a well-traveled Miami, Florida native and graduate of Miami International University of Art and Design. She has over 10 years in the real estate and investment industry. Prior to starting Bond Containers, Sherry's entrepreneurial career led her to manage over $20 million of real estate investment properties for investors, ran and, operate, ran and operated a tax firm where she was responsible for almost 500 clients, annual tax filing, and as a licensed broker and general service contractor, manage a real estate rehab company that leased property as, sh as short term. You've got to tell us about your success, honey. Vaccin um, vac vacation rentals. Her out of the box, innovative thinking always attracted the right clients and opportunities. I'm quite sure that smile does too. Her various <laughs> roles encompass client advisory, data-driven strategic planning of resource-efficient master planning, innovation strategy, development of business processes, and financial portfolio management. As a world traveler, Sherry saw the devastating results of natural disaster and the need for affordable housing as a global crisis. She saw too many hardworking people get turned away because they didn't have enough money to provide appropriate and protective shelter for their family. Sherry's a solu Sherry's solution to the affordable housing crisis is bond containers. I can't wait to learn more about that. Acquisition, <laughs> permitting, financing, real estate, leasing, development. Ladies wow. and gentlemen, I present Miss <laughs> Sherry. We're gonna call you Sherry, Sherry tonight, okay? I love it. That's a that's a lot said, right? <laughs> yes, it is, and it is worth because as you are a young, beautiful lady, and you. you have done so much, and as I'm reading, you are an entrepreneur, so you have been a successful entrepreneur. And I, I want people to hear about that in your own voice. What advice for someone young and is making a decision, do I want to go work for a corporate America or do I want to start my own? What would you tell them? Well, I was an entrepreneur at the age of 24. I started wow. my tax company at 24. And um, to be honest with you, for someone like me, I would always say, um, if you're unable to just quit your job because of your responsibilities, I would say stay there, work on your craft, work on your desires, work on your whatever it is that you are trying to achieve, um, save your money. And then then I would say, go ahead and definitely um, step out in faith and um, do, start your own business. I would say that just because I had to do that. I was, I was kind of like thrown out there where I had to figure it out, but I think it was a blessing. And for anyone who is thinking about being an entrepreneur, I always say you won't, you don't want to kind of like, you don't want to end up at, at 70, 80 years old and say, shoulda, coulda, woulda. Right. You yes. want to be able to say, hey, I did it and yes. this is what happened. So yes. so I always say, go ahead and do it. Um, and the only thing that can happen is um, that you learn from it. You learn and you grow. And that's the only way you can put God to the test is if you go ahead and do it. <laughs> that's it. Put God to the test. And won't put he do it? Test. Yes. <laughs> and he will do it. Were you nervous? Were at 24? Were you nervous? Were you aware of your emotions at the time? So what actually happened is I was a manager working at Nissan. I was a mm -hmm. service advisor. Um, the thing is that at that age, I was working almost 10 hour days. So um everyone knows, like I I'm a person who can't work at that long my body's super sensitive i'm anemic i have to eat certain things so i actually got shingles at the age of 24. Wow. so wow. shingles is kind of like a breakout that uh, more 
oh, stress LGBT related. Debt. Right. Stress related. And it's, it is stress related. So I got a severe case of shingles to where my doctor pretty much said, if you don't quit your job right now, it's going to be fatal. So huh? as I'm walking, I went and I had to put in my two week notice. As I'm walking out of the dealership, there was a young man that came and he was one of my clients. And he says, hey, where are you going? I'm like, actually, I just put in my two week notice. So he says, well, I just started a tax firm. Would you would you help me? So and oh. um, at my university, one of my minors was um, accounting. So I said, OK, I will. I'll, I'll do it. You know, I'm actually put in my two week notice. I didn't know what I was doing. But as I'm walking out, um, it was all in timing. And I said I said yes. Um, and it was so funny because tax season started. This happened in December. Tax season started in um, January. So I had one month to where wow. I was still trying to get unemployment and stuff. And he said, you know what, since you're going to be working for me, I'll front your bill, your, your first month. Wow. Rent. And then, and I said, okay, as I start working, I will go ahead and I'll pay you back. So I call all my clients from my, my previous job. So my first year I started off with 50, um, 50 clients and I made, I made more money than I made at my job for that whole year in those four months. Look so at that. It was definitely God definitely stepped in. And I felt like if I never um, I wasn't going to quit on my own because I was afraid. I was like, I don't want to quit. This is my security. At the time I had kids. So I'm like, I don't want to quit. I'm, you know, I got to feed kids. So um, it was like, well, you know what? I'm going to make something so really like severe happen to you just to put me to the test. And that's what happened. I I had to quit and I did quit. And as I'm walking out, I felt like you got an wanted. opportunity. <laughs> yes. That's faith. That yes, is that's faith, faith right there. And, and I've never you, worked for anyone since. Since I was 24, 24. I've been employed. Wow. And it's yeah. a mindset, guys. You know, as she stated that the fear of that security, not having a regular income coming in. But once you can get past that look at look at her now i mean <laughs> she's all smiles you don't yes. see she's walking around with frowns uh i'm not gonna ask her age because i've always thought that it's distasteful to ask a woman their age <laughs> <laughs> but you yes. can tell she is still she's not that far from 24 and she <laughs> literally took that step of faith and now she is at well, I mean, she's here saying she has never had to work before so is that now where Bond um, LLC came and played? Bond Containers LLC well, actually, came and played? Um, I stayed in. Um, I stayed in taxes for about five years. I was making over, well over six figures doing taxes. So what wow. I was doing, I started purchasing. Um, at the time, I started purchasing um, homes off auction. Right, right when the crash started. <laughs> so um, I started purchasing homes off auction and I started leasing them out. Um, so that business went well. And um, from there I started doing, uh, you know, a full time. I owned about eight to 10 properties at one time where I was doing Airbnb when Airbnb first came out. And I was doing that full time. And that allowed me to stop doing taxes, which my clients at the time I started off with 50 and I ended up with over 500 clients. Wow. Say that again. Say that again. again. From 50 to 500 in five years. Yes. So every year my company grew over a hundred people from referrals wow. and stuff like that. Yeah. So wow. it, was, it was nothing but God because one thing and your I personality did. and <laughs> smile. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, so after that, I, I used the money. I saw that real estate was a passion of mine because I love design. So I started purchasing home, flipping properties. And then um, the, the properties were getting a little overwhelming. So I started a brokerage firm that focused solely on um, mainly investment um, brokerage, um, teaching the agents how to get investors, how to buy for investors, stuff like that. And that's how mm -hmm. I start seeing a lot of the need um, a lot of people would come to us and they couldn't afford buying a house because of something on their credit or something 
um, something super minor that they could fix or, you know, um, they had a great job history and something small happened and they had no savings. Right. So right. Um, or nothing. I would say uh, they didn't have that second string of income. Right. Mm -hmm. So for me, I found out that was a that, that was a big need in that area, educating everyone, like even if you have your secure job, having a second stream of income, a third stream of income is so needed because yes. you never know what can happen. Even after you buy that house, you never know what can happen. So I felt there was a need to start providing affordable housing and educating a lot of our um, first time home buyers on um, um, practicing financial literacy and also providing affordable housing. And you can, I builders out here are just making a killing right now, especially in this buyer, in this seller's market. But for me, my heart is still in affordable housing because there's a huge need for that right now. Wow. And guys, I must say she was raised in Miami Gardens. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ah, she was raised in the beautiful city of Miami Garden. And so I, I went just to Norland Senior High. And school. she went to Norland Senior High right in my backyard. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yes. So we and her mom still lives in Norland, Miami Gardens. Yes. For over 30 years. Over 30 years. Man, let me tell y'all, there's something about that number. If, if you guys go back and watch each of the show, every from Ragu. Um, to Miss Hunter, to myself, we're 30 year residents. And now Juliet, we're all 30. So what, something about the number 30, we yes. all came in this city. We're all invested in this beautiful city. And guys, that's what I'm so thankful for the Laverne Dear Happy Hour Chats, because it is bringing to you that other side of Miami Gardens. You know, when I ran for mayor, people used to, tell me, oh, you live in Murder Gardens. And, and I used to get offended because I knew there was so much more to Miami Gardens than what they were showcasing of murder and crime. So I'm happy that we're able to have this platform where we can bring these beautiful individuals um, to you to showcase the talents and gift that we have had in this city. What was it like growing up in Miami Gardens? Tell, tell someone oh, who may actually, not know. Um, in my year when I grew up, there's a lot of entrepreneurs that came out of my class of 03. And um, so we we literally had a lot of entrepreneurs that we network still amongst ourselves and we kind of um, support each other still to this day. Um, there's right. restaurant owners, there's entrepreneurs like myself who's in real estate. Um, there's people who, there's uh, about five people in my grade that went to the NFL and played over five years. So there's wow. a lot of entrepreneurs that came right out of Miami Gardens that that is very- Out of New Orleans. Yes, and <laughs> New Orleans. <laughs> so, I mean, the, even, even in New Orleans, New Orleans Senior High School has a lot of veterans. And I don't know if you know this fun fact, but um, I think her name is Garcelle. The actress uh -huh. Garcelle went to Miami New Orleans Senior High School. Ah, look yes. at that. She's, she's look the, at um, that. She's the young lady on The View. Right, right. The real, wow. The real. The real, the real, the real. Yes, yes, yes. She yes. went to Miami New Orleans. Yes. Wow, look at that. So, guys, see again. Miami Garden strong, okay? We are a beautiful city um, of thrivers and just the nature of the city. So, you know, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. And I know Juliet, she is not going anywhere. I don't care what anybody says. Yes. <laughs> so, so we're just happy um, to have you. So tell us a little bit more about what is Bond. In fact, you know what? Let me go on sh and, and share my link so I can. Your website is Bond Containers, right? Yes. Bondcontainers.com. Bond All right. Hold on. I'm going to share it for you so we can share it with individuals. But before I do that, let's just share some of our um, visitors. We have Isaiah. Hi, Isaiah. Hello, Laverne. Um, we have a Seabert Williams saying hello. <laughs> Juliet is here. Uh, let's see. We oh, we have Tanisha. Um, this is another um, entrepreneur young lady, which you guys should con connect. 
because they, I met, I met her and her sister. And then all of a sudden they just start taking over. <laughs> and I love young people like that. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Tanisha, let's see what this says. Um, all right. I don't know where my sharing is going here. Oh, hold on. Hold on. All right. Some comments is I'm not able to show. I don't know why, but uh, she says entrepreneurship is the way to go. Nice. Love this. Another trailblazer blazer on the rise. Uh, <laughs> Isaiah says American high is in the house. Don't throw no shade. <laughs> All right, Isaiah, we're not going to show any, <laughs> we're not going to say throw any shades here to American High, okay? <laughs> but Norling to, to, to the world right now. <laughs> but yes, let me go ahead and share the screen and show Bond. I was looking at this and I think, guys, this is really cool. And then you can tell us more about it here. All right, let's see. All right, so I want to make sure, let me see if I can share it where people can see it. It's kind of small here. Let me see which view is best. All right, let's go over here. So this is Bond Containers. For those of you, it's Bond Container with an S, containers.com. And if you go on there, I really like this. Uh, let me see if I can click this video here. And if you guys can see this, Julia, let me know if you're able to see the video. Yes, so what you're looking at right now is a walkthrough of our one bedroom, one bathroom. It's called the Nina. And um, I actually, What is it called? It's called the Nina. And I actually named all of my units after my kids. So Nina being the first born, I named all of my one bedrooms after her. So this is a one bedroom, one bathroom um, container home. And if you take the like the, the little um, scroll and you can take it and you can move it around, what it does, it's a virtual walkthrough. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, that's a virtual walk. Oh, how nice. Look yes. at that. So anywhere apart in the um in the home you want to view, you can just take your own personal walkthrough and look in the bathroom and the kitchen everywhere. So oh, look at that. this unit features literally um it's made out of one shipping container, um, a eight by 40, and it's about 320 square feet um in total. And this sh shipping container home starts off at forty thousand dollars you can uh -huh. literally take this anywhere pop it in your backyard you can uh find land and put it we can ship it overseas and it's kind of like super easy to order um if you were to buy something like this you can order it and we can deliver it anywhere um in the united states and also overseas so Wow, this yes. is amazing. I, I want to see what this custom home, if it, it, am I able to do that? Oh, okay, so this is what it looks like, yes. right? So that shows how the portability of it. This is our smallest unit. Well, one of our smallest units. Um, our units can go um, as small as the 320 square feet and it can go as large as you want it. Some of our already designed, pre-designed, um, one is called our Trinity right she's my third child so um i is a three bedroom two bathroom um and that one is, is four containers and that one is affordable ho housing at its finest because that one starts off in the low ones and that one wow. you would do you can build pre-construction um where you can find land put it up um in the low ones and if you want to you know if you want to live in there you can a lot of investors wow. and developers has been um allowing uh, my my company to start building for them affordable housing um you can lease it airbnb you can lease it to people who just need somewhere to stay um and those units are um super affordable and the great thing about bond containers is that 
um, we're we are building with eco-friendly products like a container. Yes. It's a recyclable product, and we don't build with any wood at all. So oh. I don't know if you know about the market with construction. Wood is at its all-time high. So the government is looking for a lot of self-sustainable and eco-friendly products to to build with and to kind of not substitute wood, but an alternative for wood right now. Yes, wood yes. Is super high. And if wood is high, that means the cost of living is going to be high because now they got to raise their prices with the newer construction homes. So wow. um, I think the solution for that, which is my passion, is um, building with something that no one ever thought about building. It's not a new concept, but I think what I've done by um, making it look like a, a, a traditional home is just taking something um, that's a recyclable product and making a green home. So Wow. That is beautiful. And you know, I had one of our environmentalists, um, Moira, who was on recently, and she spoke about using plastic bottles as building blocks. And yeah. that apparently is the future of building building homes as well. Yes. When you think about it, wood, you're you're um tearing down a lot of trees. Yes. So it brings oxygen. So there there needs to be a change in um the way we build, the way we eat, the way we live all together. There needs to be a shift in the way um people are just conducting because currently now you have in in the from the um, plastic bags that's just being thrown into the ocean that's affecting yes. the sea animals as well. Well, what we're trying to do is we're trying to take these um, these um, plastics and these um, metal containers, these recyclable products, and now we can use them for living, um, for um, putting it into our construction instead of dumping it into the sea yes. and affecting the, the wildlife that's in the sea. So wow. yeah, that's what, um, going green is something that's, definitely an innovative idea that um, that the United States and the government is finally catching on to. And that's what they're looking for. And I think that's something that we can provide, just changing the mindset of just the way we live today to day, um, instead of throwing it on the floor, just putting it, putting those plastic bottles in a recycle bin, that little thing can help um, the environment in such a major way. Wow. Um, one of our guests is say one of our viewers is asking, how does it stand against hurricane winds? So that's a great question. So when you think about, I think when people think about shipping containers, they think it's, um, oh, it's shipping containers. These are like, these are old, ugly, you know, units, but shipping containers is made with steel, right? Mm. Heavy duty steel. So when you think about a shipping container, these containers are going from country to country on a boat, right? Um, and it and you have heavy winds, you have rocking, and they they can last for years and years. So wow. um, a lot of people um, don't know this, but as I start building, I start becoming a lot more aware of um, these shipping containers. And um, to even build in the state of Florida, you have to meet certain codes. So yes. your your regular um, concrete block, your concrete build. Um, they um, withhold from wind speeds about 175 miles an hour. Um, after constructing with steel um, and the, the shipping container, we can double that mile per hour wind speed. So that means oh, wow. that your heaviest um, hurricane that come, your category five or six with tornadoes in it, um, we would be able to kind of like be a safe house because it's straight steel, nothing's going through it. Um, there's a lot of uh, people uh, that I've gotten called in in um, California as well. California has a lot of earthquakes where the earth can tear apart right under your feet. If you're building with concrete, that concrete can rip apart. But because yes. these are containers, that container can't rip apart. It's staying together because the, that that metal, that steel is welded together. There's nothing that can break that apart. So as concrete is super strong, in the event of an earthquake, it's going to rip apart, right? Yes. But not steel. Steel's going to stick together. It may drop into a sinkhole, but it's going to drop in out of the whole unit and not <laughs> your walls not. You'll be able apart. to pull out back your house. It's not going to the entire your house. house. Your house going to stay the same. So, this is yeah, so. This is question. nice and great question. Yes, um, Isaiah says I look forward to supporting her. Um, Stanley says I love bond containers. 
Um, we have Grace Reed that says Gideon y Yilima. Um, not sure what if that's an individual. Um, Deborah says the older homes has steel as well. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah, so these are this is good, you know. And as we're talking about this, one of the things that I'm seeing is homelessness, right? Yes. So you foresee that something like this can help with the homelessness um issues that we're having, especially within our our, our black and brown communities. Yes, I think that's I think you guys are hitting the nail on the head with the point of the um the shipping containers. Um, shipping containers is something that we can build super fast. So like this shipping container can be built in less than two weeks, 10 to 14 business days, right? So if we can build a home in 10 days, if there's um, people out there and it, it, it takes up such a small um, blueprint of space, we can fit a lot of people in these units super quickly. Like, so your traditional build can take um, three to five to six months to build, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's such a long time. That's six months of people being without a home, living in shelters, yes. where in two weeks we can pop one of these up, fully self-sustainable um, appliances, everything turnkey ready to start putting homeless people in, shelters, veterans, um, you know, elderly, whatever it is. And it's still living luxury. You're not going to sit and live in this container box that looks like you know, um, you're in, you know, a, a steel container. Right. We make we make sure these these units look like a regular home. So nice. it's super comfortable. It's just that it's a lot more affordable. It's faster to build, and it's an eco and a green product. Yes, yes, and that's what I and that's what I love about it. That's literally what I love about it. So um, Isaiah said, I would love to partner with you with my nonprofit organization. And I believe he put a number here, 305-434-6304. So see, you have someone who is already giving you their number. Yes. <laughs> so reach out to Isaiah. These are our regular viewers. Um, you know, we have some amazing people. I see that we have a Grace Reed who is watching from Jamaica. Oh, Hi, Grace. Yes. Nice. And, my, and I'm Jamaican as well. Oh, um, yay. <laughs> nice, nice. Very nice. See, that's what the Laverne Dare Happy Hour chat does. It brings people yes. all around the world all around for the one world. hour. Yes. For awesome. one hour. That's all we ask, okay? Yes. <laughs> okay, yes. let's see what um if we have anyone else that I'm missing any comment here. And also, oh, Tanisha. Huh? I was going to say the fact that she's in Jamaica, we can ship to Jamaica as well. Oh, you do? Because it's a container. So we oh. ship them all around the world, including the West Indies. Oh, very nice. Yes. Listen, guys, this is very innovative. And yes. I love the fact, and I did get a tour myself. Juliet gave me a tour of one of these containers. And when I walked into it, I'm like, man, this is a vacation home. Can we go put it in between the beach and the mountain somewhere? Exactly. It's definitely, <laughs> it's like an affordable yes. vacation home, you know? Yes. So, yeah, it's just taking an, just just taking something that someone would have, you know, uh, probably put in the the landfill or whatever, take, using different ideas and um, taking something and just making it making it affordable, making it luxury and um, solving, uh, solving a problem. Cause you have a lot of people without homes. And then, um, after the crisis, there's a lot of lenders that have been deferring people's lo loans and, uh, uh and mortgages. Yes. So yes. within a couple of years there, these people are going to be either foreclosed on and they won't be able to catch up on their, uh, on their mortgage because of the, the crisis that happened. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how long the banks are going to continue to defer payments. So in the event that that happens, you want to be able to have a backup plan and, and plan for it. Um, and going going with the green product, it, it may be a, a def a definitely a good solution for, for all the people who are going to be looking for either rentals or a place to stay after that. Mm. Well... This is innovative. I love it. I, I mean, I thank you for just being a young woman, listening to your intuition, 
following your dreams and is able to sit here now and share your story. So as a world traveler, tell us what that is. I, I mean, I was so, just excited when I saw that. <laughs> I think that uh, what that is, is I'm traveling the world. I've been to, um, I've been to Ghana. I've been to Africa. I've been to um, Sierra Leone. Wow. I've been to um, Thailand. I've been to all over the United States, as well as you know the West, as as well as the West Indies, Jamaica. I mean, you name it. Like I've wow. probably been there. Um, and in my travels, what I've learned everywhere I've been, I've learned that there is um, a crisis for housing a housing crisis. And this is not just subject to United States. This is everywhere. And um, what happened is when I went to Ghana, that's when I found the need to try and find a solution for housing. And these, I, I took a picture, it's on my Facebook, where they were taking clay and straw building homes, right? And even though to me it was beauty, the reality is that they're living in straw and clay homes. And if I if I were to build one of these containers, our smallest unit is a 20 footer and we build for 10, 20 grand, we can, you know, we can definitely put a, a lot of families in these homes and still give them the necessary, the, the necessities like your bathrooms, your toilet, yes. everything, and still live still live comfortably. Um, so uh, in my journey, I saw that people are people, whether you're Chinese, whether you're black, you're white, every, everybody, people are people, people love the same way. And my heart just goes out to everyone around the world because we're fighting the same fight. You know, yes. um, everyone wants to live, they want to eat and they, 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 they need a place to stay and they just want to be loved. So for me, like I always, everywhere I go, no matter who you are, no matter what you are, love mm -hmm. is always the number one thing that I share. You know, I listen, I have a listening ear to anyone. And as long as I can put a smile on your face or as long as we can share um, love together, then that made my day. So. Yes. <laughs> So yes, I, and I, actually, someone was family. asking. Someone was asking, "How was it in Ghana?" Ghana was beautiful. But Ghana currently now, I talked about it as well. Um, Ghana is open. Ghana needs. Ghana is requesting for a lot of African Americans to go down in Ghana. Ghana right now, I compare it to them living comparing to the 1970s, right? There's a lot of things that Ghana needs to catch up on. A lot of technology, the way that they are. Um, um, doing construction, housing, the way that they're running their businesses um, is a little dated. So currently now, Ghana is offering to African Americans um, free citizenship. Yes, I saw it. Over ten thousand dollars and free land. They're giving oh. us land to buy homes. Okay, so when can we go? Down. Let's go. Take my hands. <laughs> I'm yes. ready. Take my hands. <laughs> yes. Yes, wow. and the thing is that that's what I'm I'm trying to create a team to go to Ghana, show them that there's so much more to life than the United States. Ghana's giving us everything. They're encouraging African Americans to go back and build up and develop because we are, as as um, people in Miami Gardens, as a, a young minority woman. You know, I've learned a lot in the United States. I've learned a lot about entrepreneurship. I learned a lot of in education. And um, you have other countries that is in need of that knowledge and they're paying us, you know, they're paying us just wow. to go and share the knowledge that we've learned in the United States with marketing, with entrepreneurship, with, with learning even how to build homes in more efficiently and more effectively and cost, effect, uh, uh, cost effectively. Um, right. if, we're go if we can go back and just share some of that knowledge with Ghana. Um, they're asking for it, and there's a lot of opportunity in Ghana. Um, and that's one of my, actually, one of my favorite places I've ever been was Ghana. It was beautiful. How is so, the food there? How is the food there? The food, I was, the thing about it is, I have a very sensitive stomach. Me too. That's why I ask. <laughs> I didn't eat a lot of the food. I kind of stuck to what I knew. Um, I just, and uh, I just kind of ate just fruits and vegetables there. I didn't eat any of, like, the meat there. Um, but the um where i stayed um it was eye opener i stayed in a really nice place 
And my perception of Ghana was like, I'm going to go and see all these people in bad places. And even though I did see those places, I saw mansions everywhere. I saw um, beautiful hotels. I saw beautiful parks. I met a lot of beautiful people that look just like me, right? I'm like, right. these people, these women are gorgeous. The men are, the men are like tall and it's just like, wow. Like I, it totally wasn't what I was expecting. It was a lot it was a lot better. It was very insightful. And um, me and my ignorance, it took away all of that to say that even though we travel, like I said, around the world, even though I've traveled around the world and I've been a lot of places, um, there's a lot of similarities to these other countries, um, to, to the U.S., to be honest with you. There's a lot of similarities and it was beautiful to me. I had a great time. Wow. Wow. I could just sit here and listen to you all day. I mean, you are a motivator. You are an, you are an inspiration. And, you know, I am just hoping that you can touch the lives of some young woman somewhere who is struggling, not knowing that they can just stand up, believe in their dreams. Um, it's okay to be scared at first, but just take that step of faith. I, I think say, that's what it I is to give like one advice. Um, the one of the things that I felt like was in my spirit, I would say, um, is that if you don't take your 50%, if you don't step out and take your first step is, it's going to be hard for God to, to take his next step. Uh, so if you start it, he will finish it. And yes. in my life and, uh, and in my development, of growth. I started as a taxpayer. I used that money to, to um, buy houses. Then I used that money to start up, to start a brokerage firm. I learned about houses. Then I used that. Now I'm a builder, right? So it was, it was in stages, but if I would have never taken my first step, God would not have been able to take his step and, and finish the job. And as I'm still taking steps, I'm still um, taking risks and I'm still moving in faith. But I know that now I just, I don't even think about, or I don't have any fear anymore when I step out, because I know that I've been through a lot <laughs> and yes. I'm here now and always take that first step because you would never know how God would how God would take you to the other side unless you do it. And he's waiting for you to do it. So I would oh, say, go look ahead at that. He's yes. waiting for you to do it. If yes. you're listening to Laverne Dear Happy Hour Chats, if you walk away with nothing else tonight, say that again. Walk away with taking that first step. You take the first step. If you start it, God would definitely finish it. And he's waiting for you to yes. take your first step. Yes. So he's not going to bless you with that dream until you take that first step. I don't know who we're talking to tonight. Mm -hmm. I don't know who needs this message, but take your first step. And God is waiting for you to take that step of faith. He is. You're hearing from a beautiful young woman. She's telling you her history, her story of what she has gone through and her step of faith. Stress pushed her to quit her job. And before she even stepped out the door, she was offered an opportunity. What yes. more blessing is that? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So Sherry, I am so thankful. I don't know where the time flies. I tell people one hour, it goes by so fast. So you can sacrifice coming, sharing an hour with Laverne Deer every Friday, okay? Let's see yes. what in, what what our guests, any, let me see anyone says, oh, well, Isaiah says, welcome to, cl welcome to club. I'm world tracker, traveler as well. We are super fortunate in the U.S. When you go to other countries, you really appreciate what you have in the U.S. Yes. I have a special place in my heart for third world countries. Yes. I promised myself that I would tackle housing in different countries. Look at that. Uh, that's amazing. I love it. I, we share the same interest. And it's always great to start to step out of your four walls, to step out of your to step out of Miami Gardens. You would appreciate Miami Gardens a lot more. Um, and you just see how people are living somewhere else and it'll open your eyes to opportunity. Like, oh, they don't got this. Maybe we could bring this there. Oh, they don't have this. Maybe we could yes. bring that there. And that's the, yes. that's the importance of traveling because you don't know 
what you have or you don't know what you don't have unless you can start exploring other places and you'll start god will put that that passion and that desire to where your where your purpose should be in life you know um is stepping out of, stepping out of your four walls and seeing what else is out there and to see how god can utilize you so for me it was definitely in um and besides my advice and besides um just loving unconditionally is um in in the housing so uh, I anywhere I go, I talk about it because um, there's the solution um, besides just having people live in debt, right? You spent yes. 30 years, 30 yes. years, the 30. Yes, 30 the 30. Years, Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Something get, about that 30 number. Talk about the 30. 30 years, right? <laughs> Let me tell you. Uh, listen, guys, this is Sherry, okay? Um, I'm, I've shown you her website. It is beautiful. I enjoyed clicking on it. Take the time to go through this. Here. Look at that. Just look at that. And the landscaping around these homes is not short of any other buildings. Yes. And we you can create the financing. same landscape. <laughs> yes. We also offer financing. Um, just like regular builders, we also offer financing if you're interested in building as well. Very nice, very nice, very nice. So guys, this is bondcontainers.com. The phone number is 1-844-GO-BOND-4. Oh, I love that. 1-844-GO-BOND-4. Go-BOND-4, okay? Please yeah. go ahead and check that out. Her web, Her email is info at bondcontainers.com and they are open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. For those of you who may be an elected officials and you're looking for solutions for affordable housing, reach out to Bond um, Containers. Ms. Sherry Bond, this is a beautiful idea we can bring um, to any of these cities right here. You know, I mean, we need to start start educating our young people that they can become a part of the American dream by owning, 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 owning. And when you own, you start with one, you continue to build on the other. So Sherry, is there any last minute word message that you want to give anyone before we close out? I just wanted to thank you so much for the opportunity. I so appreciate it. And I, I thank you and my mom for um, allowing me to come on. <laughs> oh, of course. Blessing. She has been someone who's been supporting from day one. So Aww. I thank you guys. And um, guys, she's you. talking about Juliet, who is welcoming you all right in the happy hour chats. This is Juliet's <laughs> daughter. Just yes. so you know, kudos oh. to Juliet for doing a great job raising this phenomenal woman. <laughs> who is an example of what faith is. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you in so many ways. And you're welcome here anytime. I mean, your mom is Juliet, so she can schedule you anytime. <laughs> you have favoritism. Favor. <laughs> favor, there you go, favor. So with that said, guys, um, this, is, this was very informative. And I stated in the beginning that I wanted to step away from the politics. We've been talking politics now for the past several um, previous shows. I wanted to just sit down and have a conversation uh, with a beautiful young woman who is the future leaders of America. And you know, for me, I just love to empower people. So I'm thankful to you. Please share this. I know a lot of times, and I told you guys before in the beginning that for me, it is more about quality and not quantity. So don't feel any way if thousands of people are not viewing this. The message is quality. Share it. Share it even after we're done. Tell someone about this because someone may need to learn about entrepreneurship. Someone may need to learn about these bond containers. Someone may just need to hear a word of encouragement. All right. So with that says, thank you, Sherry. Have thank a beautiful so weekend. I want to say thank you to our guests, everyone who joined us tonight. Thank you all. Have a great weekend. Love you all. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you, Sherry.